All right, so I'm with Carl Liebert, who is the Chief Operating Officer of USAA. How long have you been with USAA? Four years now. I've been okay. a member for 29 years, but four years at USAA on the leadership team. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you probably just called in over and over again, you know, praising how much you loved your service. And they're probably like, can we just give this guy a job or something? Actually, my wife did, right? So uh -huh. I, I was working, building a career, whether it was in the Navy or on my civilian career. Yeah. So my wife is who one who had the relationship with USAA. She took care of all of our banking and yes. insurance needs and so she knew more about the company than I did when I first joined. Wow yeah. okay so now uh, it, with you the work that you do right now you obviously you've overseen a lot over the past four years uh -huh. and one of the things that USA has been instrumental and very supportive of is the Army Navy game. Yeah. Why is USA such a big sponsor of this of this game? It's just a game right? Yeah no it's not just a game it's America's <laughs> game right and I think one of the beautiful things about what USA has done is elevated this for all of America to, to, to take advantage of it. I think it, it, when I was growing up, it was a it was an important game. It was a game my grandfather, who served in World War II, said we sat down and watched it. He was he was in the army, and so we watched it together. But now it's become this point of, of families that know people who served or their relatives had served. They're watching this game, and they're recognizing that service to one's country is a really, really powerful thing, and it's an important thing. And so that process, is, the game has been elevated through, I think, our partnership with both Army and Navy to bring it to life. Yeah. Now, I understand, too, that USA will have some messages during the game tomorrow, oh, yeah. Yeah. and I hear they're really great. Can you yeah. give us a preview? What's well, I, I can I can preview a little preview. This yeah. is um, this this time uh, is a is a really emotional time. Seventy five years ago, this week was Pearl Harbor, and so we're going to celebrate World War II and Pearl Harbor survivors before the game and throughout the game, especially with our our partners out there. Um, you know, most people would say December seventh, nineteen forty one. It forever changed the landscape of our country. It moved us, it made us um, a world superpower, but it was the first time when we woke up and realized that we needed to lead. Yeah. And in order to have a peaceful state of life for our Americans, but around the world, that America needed to step forth and lead. And from that day forward, our country has been on a great trajectory. You know, we all have our opportunities, but the important part is uh, I think we're going to celebrate that during this game so that all of America has a chance to celebrate and remember those who died for us and who um, who honorably served. Now, Carl, so I served in the United States Navy for five years, and three of those oh. years I had the great privilege of serving in Pearl Harbor for three oh years and gosh. so when you go visit the yeah. Arizona Memorial when oh, yeah. you stand on that and you 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 if you get the opportunity to yeah. visit a veteran which I had on many occasions yeah. it's just a very very humbling experience and yeah. I know that you recently I'm just there were just yeah. in Pearl Harbor can you share a little bit about that experience well yeah I uh, had a privilege it's to, an important anniversary oh yeah, it's an incredibly <laughs> important anniversary and I'll tell you it's a little bit uh, as my wife said, you 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 haven't literally let it soak in yet, right? Yeah. So I, we we came in on the off the red eye. We were there uh, this week, and on December seventh, we were there that morning at seven fifty five. Uh, had a moment of silence when the attack started, just before morning colors. Uh, we were there with over a hundred Pearl Harbor survivors and World War Two uh, World War Two veterans, and um, the emotion of you're in this beautiful place, you served in Pearl Harbor, you know what that's like, but yeah. the emotion that these folks who came all the way back and the fact that after 75 years, one of the veterans was 104. Um, how many more opportunities are there gonna be to get right. all these folks together? So we just felt like at USA, this was the year where that we needed to really, really highlight these folks. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's, a, it's an emotionally stirring experience. I got a chance to personally talk to uh, probably about 15 or so of these veterans. Yeah. All of them, to a person, talked about their service. They talked about that day. They talked about the people that they served with. And they talked about how thankful they were that we were taking a moment to remember them. And yeah. uh, just... Uh, gives me chills. It does. 75 years sounds like so long and yet we still have these amazing men and women on the earth with us still who can still tell this story and this story is so important and I know USA did a great a beautiful video about yeah. this that got shared all over social media yeah. just about that important day so yeah. I think to tomorrow I, I if I'm to understand correctly I think that there's going to be some mention of this anniversary. There are there's going to be quite a bit of few it would be 
be quite a many mentions of it. And uh, we're going to share some other videos and some other things that we've done at work. We did an extensive amount of interviews. We worked with several media properties to be able to do that. Uh, we've shared those videos with the Library of Congress and, and some of those things. Because these are, these are stories of military veterans that need to be told and need to be shared and really need to be celebrated. And so we're going to work to bring that to life for all of America tomorrow uh, during America's game. Yeah. You know, USA, just last question. So yeah. USA provides some great products and services, and I think they, they stand out compared to a lot of the competition out yeah. there. Uh, but USA also has this mission that transcends just these services or this higher level of service that they provide to their audience. Yeah. And that's their mission. Yeah. And so from your perspective, like what mantle do you feel that you have in your role with USA to, to carry on that work and continue that work? Yeah, so you mentioned products and services. You know, we're really made up of about 30,000 employees that are here to serve our members. And um, it's never more important that when our members need us that we're always going to be there for them. And sometimes that's just helped me make sure I have enough money in my checking account to pay my bills. To, in the case of uh, the Tennessee wildfires, I don't know if you've been following, just outside of Gatlinburg, these yep. hor horrid uh, wildfires. We had many members affected. Um, you know, within days, our members had their money, they were paid, and they were being taken care of, and they were starting to rebuild their lives. I say that to you is because I'm only as good as the people who actually serve our members, and they make they make guys like me look great all the time because they they put their own uh, personal issues aside and focus on that member they're talking to or the member they're with, and and bring our mission to life. It's because of them. Yeah that we have um, this unbelievable service mentality. Our job as leaders is just to get out of, the, make sure everything gets out of their way so they can do that. Yeah. yeah, and then finally, my question is not who's gonna win tomorrow, but how badly is the Navy going to beat Army tomorrow? Well, <laughs> first of all, we are gonna win, yeah. uh, and we're a little beaten up from last week, yeah. we're, but the, we've only got, we've got less than one week's rest as we're coming into, which hasn't happened to us in a while, but I so believe in culture, and I believe in the Naval Academy's yes. culture and their team that what Coach Ken has done is brought that culture yeah. together. So we're going to bring the next person up. They're going to lead us to victory. They're going to make sure that it's a good game so uh, America stays tuned in all the way through to yeah, see the alma mater of the Naval Academy sung last. <laughs> but it's going to be a great day either way, and we're incredibly excited to be a part of it. All right, Carl Lieber, the Chief Operating Officer yeah. of USA, thank you so much. Thanks for including thank us you. today. Yes. Thank you. All right.